Hello, everybody. Welcome to What the Flick. Alonzo Duralde, Ben Mankiewicz, Matt Achity, Christy Lemire. Uh, reflecting upon the sad loss this week of writer, director, actor Harold Ramis, uh, who passed away after a lengthy battle with vasculitis. Um, I, he was one of those guys who just always seemed to be in the right place in terms of getting involved with, you know, he was at Second City in Chicago. He was the first head writer for SCTV, which I think is a landmark show that doesn't get its due uh, among right. TV comedies. Uh, you know, was one of the writers of Animal House with, you know, Doug Kenny and Chris Miller, who well, were... He wrote for National Lampoon. He wrote for Playboy. Right, yeah, yeah. He did, play, he did, the, he did the, the Tiny Tim Playboy interview. He was a, <laughs> he was a writer when he went to Second City. And mm -hmm. to do it, and saw it, and was like, I should, I should join. I should, <laughs> I should do this. And then, of course, but I'm sure a lot of people think that. But he sure, actually yeah, did yeah. it, and they, uh, which I thought was interesting. Well, what was so great that he did? It was so. Um he knew his role, right? He knew he was always the smartest person in the room. He let the wacky people like Bill Murray or John Belushi or whoever be the wackiness, and he was the core, the smart core, the guy with the plan. But he also made you feel like you could be part of the team and in on the joke. There was no condescension in his intelligence. Sure, and right. um, just had, you know, he made us feel like like we, we could be one of those guys too. Yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, what, what I, in looking back at his stuff, you kind of realize that, you know, when he was on screen, he was perfectly, he was content to be the straight man. Like you said, like, you know, in Ghostbusters, you know, Egon gets some good lines, but for the most part, it's letting it be Bill Murray show. But even as, I mean, this is a guy who directed Caddyshack, and right. nobody talks about the director of Caddyshack when they talk about Caddyshack. They remember Bill Murray lines and stuff, but it's Ramis who went up to Bill, Bill Murray during what was just going to be kind of a throwaway scene of him, like, you know, hitting the tulips right. with the golf club and saying, do you ever talk to yourself like you're a sports mm -hmm. announcer? And then that's where the whole Cinderella story thing he came from. It, right. Just that little, you know, uh, yeah. nugget of, of inspiration. His great line, of course, is, you know, the secrets to making a great comedy is the one uh, hire Bill Murray <laughs> to turn on the game. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and what's so sad is that they had that falling out yeah, it's really for sad. the last several years of Harold Ramis' life. Yeah, during during the shooting of Groundhog Day. After, right? Yeah, during so Groundhog 20, Day. 21 and, years. Yeah, yeah during, this, during, the, during the shoot of Groundhog Day, they, they had a falling out that they, I don't know that they ever mended, unfortunately. And, and I think Ramis' career suffered for it. I mean, he, he, made, he continued to make interesting films after Groundhog Day, but not having Murray uh, in his quiver, I think, uh, you know, kind of sucked. But, like I have friends who who very feverishly defend the unloved Stuart saves his family. <laughs> um, when I did my Christmas book, I saw the Ice Harvest. That's an amazing. Yeah, movie. I, I read a bunch of uh, appreciations of Harold Ramis uh, this week that said, "And revisit the freaking Ice Harvest." Yeah, I don't think I ever saw it in the first place. Uh, it did, wasn't a big hit, but uh -huh. uh, it's it's dark and yeah. creepy and funny well, and good. very bleak. Yeah. It's really and the good. second one's terrible, but analyze this is funny. Yeah. Yeah. Like, analyze this, analyze is, really this good. is a good yeah. movie. The it, second one's bad. It had, it, bad it had the misfortune of opening two months after The Sopranos debut. Uh -huh. Right, so it seemed uh -huh. like oh here's a mobster and a psychiatrist, yeah. but it's really funny. And uh, but I mean, look, you know. Writing, directing, or star—I mean, Animal House, Caddyshack, Stripes, Ghostbusters, Back vacation, to School, Back to School, back to school. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Vacation, Analyze This, Groundhog Day, Meatballs. Like, you know, I don't care whether he made some bad movies right. too. Like, that's that's that, a hell of a run. That's, that's enough. Right? <laughs> right? You know, see, if you grew up in the '70s and the '80s, like yeah. that, I think you couldn't possibly know in the moment how important he was going to end up being in our in our lives. And, you know? and, and Analyze This, by the way, was mm -hmm. 1999. So, uh, you know, mm. from, from 19, Caddyshack was 80, the first one he directed. Right. So, I mean, it's not like it was just years. a, it wasn't a four-year run. It was... Yeah. No, 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 yeah. no. And Animal House was like 70. Yeah, yeah, right. He's got a bunch of movies that any single movie somebody would be proud of. But you look, you know, I mean, Groundhog Day alone is yeah. an amazing movie, right? And so much, that's a movie that ends up really transcending what I think expectations originally were for. That's something that people keep revisiting. That's a movie that people talk about when they talk about their personal philosophy of life. Mm -hmm. They yeah. talk about Groundhog Day really sort of shaping them and, and, and making them think about how they live and what they're living for and, and how, they, how they're doing it. Um, yeah, I, you know, I, I think that uh, he really redefined screen comedy. I mean, I think he kind of... It, you know, I, in the thing I wrote for the rap, I said that in the same way that Al Pacino and Dustin Hoffman redefined the public's idea of what a leading man looked like, Ramis's comedies, I think, really kind of redefined the idea of who could be a comic hero. You know, there was a certain breed of kind of slackery smart aleck that we really hadn't seen in movies before, you know, in movies like Stripes, and, and, and I think that, that he really kind of I don't think turned you, into a what we now think of as a familiar comic type. Yeah, I, I don't think you have the career that Judd Apatow has without, yeah, totally. without yeah. Ramos. And Which he, is why Apatow cast him yeah. and knocked up. Yeah. And then, he said that he wanted him, sorry, that he wanted 
is the dad we all wanted to have in Harold Ramis. <laughs> so you see him in a little role like that. Also, I love seeing him in something like like Walk Hard, where he's in a couple of scenes right. as the Orthodox Jewish manager. <laughs> and like, you know, it's good to see him in those little roles. Like you're, you're happy to see him in those little roles. Go One ahead. of my favorite, I mean, there's so many. You know, Stri to me, Stripes was seminal in sort of awareness of comedy and what I thought was funny. Um, but mentioning that Ramis is the dad we all wish we had, the line from Stripes is, you know, as my dad always told me, never hit anyone in anger unless you're absolutely sure you can get away. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, you know, there was this idea of, of sort of, you know, uh, the, the, the enemy in, in all these movies was established, privileged, Order. Yeah, institutions yeah, institutional and, and order, conformity. right? Yeah. And uh, you know that, that, that those movies that makes you know you start talking about it in those terms, those, those movies become a little bit more important than yeah, just they're subversive. Almost, they're subversive, you know. right? Yeah. And the you know how many how many writers directors pass away in the White House issues of statement? Yeah, and quotes him. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And quotes him in the statement. And makes a joke. Referencing yeah. one of the movies. Yeah, no, that was pretty yeah. great. Cause I, like, I remember when Eric Romer died and Sarkozy put out a statement. I thought that would never happen in this country, but and I guess it, it would. You know, <laughs> um, the, uh, the, uh, the other you, thing about Ramis that I think is great is that uh, he, you know, when you think about the films of Woody Allen or the films of Mel Brooks or guys like that, those guys, in in varying ways, always made it a point that you remembered those were Mel Brooks and Woody Allen movies. Mm -hmm. Like they were a brand unto themselves, and they 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 inflict that brand upon their films, just you know, to sort of put that in the public consciousness. I think a lot of people, it wasn't until Ramis died, they looked at the list and were like, wow, really, this guy did all that? Because he never. Right smooched himself onto his stuff to be like, this is a Harold Ramis film and I did this and me, me, me. You I know? think part of that was because he played roles that, because as a character, you know, after, after Egon and mm -hmm. the Ghostbusters movies, he, he didn't have anything except for the roles in like Walk Hard and, and, right. and Knocked Up. So like he faded into the background as an actor and I think that enabled us to think of him as fading into the background in general. Sure. Well, um, it's, it's, which is unfortunate. It's interesting, you know, Bringing up Ghostbusters and what you said about him taking a back seat, you know, his, the way he plays Egon and the way Egon is written, like that would be a character that's e that would easily be really having a superior attitude towards everyone else. Like Egon's definitely the smartest of those scientists. And, and you get like, he kind of feels that he's the smartest, but he's not overt about making everybody else feel shitty. Like there could really have been something between Egon and Venkman you know, with Egon constantly belittling Venkman, and it doesn't happen, and he kind of steps back, and that's, that's kind what, of a brave choice. Yeah, that's what Christie said at the yeah. beginning, I think, I think it's really true, that's a great point, that, that, that he sort of knew, you know, he, right, he, he could easily have made everybody feel dumb and lesser than, and right. never did, and I think it, you get the sense that Ramis totally knew his place, that he could sit at the table with all those funny comedians, and every 12 minutes he would say something incredibly funny, <laughs> but he would be quiet for 12 more minutes. Uh, I wonder when the White House quoted the line about total consciousness, whether there was a debate <laughs> to say, to also to finish it and say, so he's got, he's got that, that going for him. <laughs> <laughs> Which is nice. And then they thought, I guess we can't. I wish they had, but I get I get. I, I think Matt, Matt Singer had a great tweet. He said, if the, if the Dalai Lama released a statement today that was gungu gungalung, the internet would break. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right, so, uh, yeah. R.I.P. Gunga, gunga. That's right. Bye.